Hey and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the Polyumod Material Database. I received a number of questions about what is the Material Database? How do I use it? And how does it really work? So that's what I will try to describe today. So to do that, I will open mCalibration as you can see here. And then I just going to select a material model. Typically we switch down to some of these more advanced models like the Tree Network model, the TND model, or any of the Abacus or ANSYS, etc. models. But if at the top of this list, there is um, a number of material models already calibrated for us. And these are the uh, material database models. So if we click on, for example, um, material database PTFE, uh, you will see a little description of this material model to the right. If I click OK now, you will see that there are five parameters that describe this material model. The first one is the type of material model in this database. 2001 happened to be the identifier for PTFE. But there are no parameters to describe the, the Young's modulus, the, the flow resistance, the hardening with different strain rates, etc. These are all pre-calibrated for you. You don't need to test the PTFE. Uh, you just get this material model as part of the Polyumod library. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so let's take a look at what predictions this particular model has. So I can go up here. And I'm going to use a predefined set of uh, virtual test cases by clicking on the plus V. I'll switch to, how about universal tension, six strain rates? And I say, OK. I, I can then run once, and we can see what the predictions look like. So if I select the material database version of PTFE, which is the fluoropolymer Teflon, uh, it tells us that this material model will behave like this at different strain rates. It's a very strong strain rate dependent response. Um, and this is typical for all of the different material models in the database. It, they are viscoelastic, viscoplastic material models that have been calibrated extens to extensive experimental data. And you can just use them in any uh, design you have. You, uh, you wouldn't get necessarily the exact properties of the PTFE or whatever material you're interested in that you select but it's a generic property that you can simulate using this approach. And that can often be quite useful as well. And the value here, of course, when you compare this to um, properties that you get from material data sheets, et cetera, where you have, say, a Young's modulus, shear stress, a yield stress, very basic things like that. Here you get the full viscoplastic material model that is realistic for the material that you select. And therefore, it's kind of interesting to use that uh, as part of your uh, studies sometimes, just before you uh, go down and calibrate an actual material model for the material you're interested in. This is just ready to go the way they're, they're used. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the theory and how you would use this in practice. You see these are the material models here, the parameters. I can export them from here into any of the finite element solvers that you see here. So you can run this database model in Abacus, in ANSYS, LSDyna, Comsol, Mark, Radios, uh, as you can see. Um, I'm going to export it into a Abacus CIE script. Uh, and I'll save it. And I'm just going to call it the default value there. Now I can use this in my Abacus simulation. I will show you that in, in, in just a little bit. First, I'm going to just demonstrate uh, how you can read more about this to see what the options are. So if you go to the polymerfem.com website, and then you go to the polyumod uh, menu item and click on polyumod material database. Uh, if you click on that, uh, there's a page here that describes a little bit more about how this database works and what the choices are here. So we can scroll down to the available models. There are 22 models in this database. You can sort them depending on name or on the ID here. So sort of an aim, name, you see that's an ABS thermoplastic uh, material. You have some additive manufactured parts, EPDM rubber, HDPE, low density polyethylene, nylon, peak, um, etc. Uh, so the list is not super long, but it has some really good material models for these particular materials at this time. Um, then the description here is what I talked about earlier. There are five parameters that you can describe, uh, use to, to describe these. The first one is the material ID, which should be the, the value in this um, column here. The other ones you typically don't need to change, except the, the Unix version, and this is, can be important. 
So these are pre-calibrated, so you can't specify what unit the modulus is. So you have to uh, instead specify the unit ID. So there are four different choices of units you can use this with, and you can see them here. I typically run my simulations in newtons, millimeters. Uh, some people run it in pounds in inches or newtons per uh, millimeters, milliseconds, etc. So there are four choices. These are the most common ones that I see people use, and those are the ones you uh, you need to select from if you want to use this. Then you can just specify this into your finite element program just like you specify any material from the polyumod library, except that you specify only these five parameters that's listed here. So uh, this is the abacus version, here's the ANSYS commands, Adistana commands, etc. here. Um, so that's really uh, the, the background to how this works. Uh, I'm now going to try to show you how this uh, works in Abacus. So I have a pre-made example here. This is a golf club hitting a, a golf ball is uh, what I wanted to demonstrate. So let's see if I can show you the part. Here's the golf ball, here's the golf club. And um, the golf club is rigid in my simulation. And I want to explore how, how what happens if I uh, were to simulate a golf ball of different materials. What if the material of the golf ball is not what you typically use when you play golf? What about something else? What would happen? This is a case where material data sheets you just wouldn't work very well. You would have perhaps modulus and the yield stress, but the response clearly is strain rate sensitive. So you will need a viscoplastic material model to really understand the performance of some other golf ball material. So in my example, uh, I can just set up my finite element simulations as usual. I then import, I run script. I select the exported parameters from M calibration, which is the, the way I would do it. And here's the one I just cal exported a minute ago. I already have done that, so I, I'm not going to do it again. I have uh, the material that I select for my example is a PTFE, so Teflon. I'm going to pretend I made a golf ball out of Teflon. Is that a good idea? Well, let's find out. Will this work? Well, how do this behave like? So, so I double click on my material model here. You will see that it's a typical definition. It has a density, it has depth var, and then use of material 2001 is Teflon in this case. And then I set it up as usual. I don't want to go through all the details in this, this movie, but the idea is that uh, I am swinging the golf club with a given velocity. In this case, I picked 50 meters per second. So that's a a really good swing from a someone who is a, a, a sheer, a clearly a good golf player. And I will look at what happens as that golf club head hits my pure Teflon golf ball. So that's pretty interesting. This is fits, of course, an Abacus explicit or a Lestina explicit or an, any explicit simulation would be good here. Um, or you can do an implicit uh, dynamic if you like, but this it works really well for an explicit simulation. So I already ran this simulation. I'm just going to open up my my results. I think you might actually have it loaded here. Here is the, the situation. You see there is no strain in the club. I assume that's rigid for my example. And here is the golf ball. I can spin this around. They're almost contacting at the start. And um, and then we can start stepping through the, the time history of this. And I move this over here. We'll see that the golf club hits the ball and it starts to spin and move forward. So it's a clear hit. So we can get a better view of it like this. What's the maximum strain if you hit this 50 meters per second on a Teflon ball? That's not something you do every day. The strains are still relatively small because Teflon is not a super soft material. It's stiffer than typical golf ball materials that you would play with. We get about 24% strain there as maximum, and then it goes down again, and uh, then it just keeps flying away. If we were to plot the velocity, that's the last thing we take a look at here, velocity magnitude, 50 is the velocity of the head, and the golf ball itself is higher. It's, it's, a, it's a lighter material. It actually rebounds with a higher velocity uh, in this particular case. Um, 
But that's really what I want to show here. You can take this material database um, model and you can put it into any simulation you're interested in. It doesn't have to be Abacus, it could be ANSYS, it could be Atlas Dyna, it could be uh, any of the other ones that I mentioned earlier. And this is all pre-calibrated for you. You get the high quality material model that you can use. And if you have a PolyUmod license, you can just plug this in. It comes with the PolyUmod library. If you don't have a PolyUmod license, you should reach out to us on polymerfem.com and request a free trial license. Thank you.